I said, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Can you flip uh, and help me, uh, media, can you flip on Romans chapter 4 from verse 19 to 20? I want to cut through the chase because of time this morning. Romans chapter 4 and now um, from verse 19 to 20. Uh, this is talking about Abraham, and he said, And Abraham not being weak in faith, Abraham not being weak in faith, Abraham not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body that was already dead. Now, when you read that passage of scripture, what you think it is saying is that Abraham was strong in faith, right? Now, that, that's correct, but there are two ways to look at the first line of that uh, verse of Scripture. He says, Abraham, not weak in faith. In the actual literal Greek rendering, he says, Abraham being strengthened by faith. So it wasn't talking so much as the faith of Abraham, but what the faith did to Abraham. Are you listening to me? So he said, Abraham, if you read it the way it should be read, he says, and Abraham strengthened by faith, which means from that we understand that faith can bring you strength. Remember the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that Sarah herself received strength by faith. So we know that faith can strengthen you. Somebody say faith can strengthen me. Okay, so let's go on. Abraham, not weak in faith, did not consider his own body that was already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and he did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. The next verse is where I'm going. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened. See that again? Strengthened by faith, giving glory to God. And we appreciate Pastor, he's not in the service today. We appreciate Pastor B, Pastor Timothy, and the entire pastorate. Let's just go right on. Hallelujah, are you here? So I want to explain one or two things today as we begin to celebrate God. He tells us that Abraham was strong or strengthened by faith. He refused to consider his body, one, and he refused to consider the body of his wife. Or rather, he realized that the body of his wife and his body were dead. He understood that. But he refused to allow that to be his focal point. But what did he, did, what did he do? The Bible says he gave glory to God. He gave glory to God. Is there a place where we can purchase glory to hand over to God? Can you walk into Tesco and tell Tesco, can you please give me glory what 30 pounds or 30,000 pounds so that I can offer it to God? And if they gave it to you, how would you offer it? So I'm trying to explain to you when we read the Bible, we need to ask questions. So how did he give the glory and where did he obtain it from? Because when you read that passage of scripture and we begin to say things like we give God glory, are we trying to say we are giving to God what he does not have? When you say, I honor you, God, when we say things like, let us crown him with many crowns, does that mean he's not wearing crown? Or does that mean he's waiting for the crown you want to give? And by the way, when you say crown him with many crowns, where is the crown? So what I'm saying is this, when we begin to sing praises, when we begin to give God glory, or when we use phrases like that, we need to understand what we are saying. So when the Bible says, Abraham gave glory to God, how? You should ask the question, how? Did he buy it? And how did he give it to God? We give glory to God for the purpose of this short exhortation in two primary ways. The first one, which is the primary one and the fundamental one, is that you give praise to God through your actions, through the things you do or through your lifestyle. Which means a person cannot say effectively that I am a true worshiper of God when his or her lifestyle is not submitted to the lordship of the word. Are you with me? Giving God praise transcends just saying something to God. Saying something to God is praise. I'm not saying that is not praise. I'm going to come to that in a minute. But before you say something to God, what you are, what you do goes first. 
So you can come to become like the Israelites when God was speaking to them. And he said, these people draw near me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. Their lifestyle and the things they say are at contrary disposition. So they say one thing, they do the other. So when they come in the church, they look like they're Christians. But the moment they step out, what comes out of their mouth, what comes out of their conduct is on the opposite direction of what the scripture says. That is not praise. How do we know praise in the life of Abraham? God told Abraham, go sacrifice your son. And Abraham could have excused himself. He could have said, no, I rebuke you, God. This must be the devil. God doesn't talk like this in the name of Jesus. God has given me this. This is my son. I received it by faith. No devil can take it from me. He can go into a fit of spiritualism to counsel God. He can excuse it and find ways to dodge it. But praise, like I said, is found in your actions. What did Abraham do? He didn't just say, thank you, Father. No, that is praise. He did something. As a matter of fact, when you read the story in Genesis, when he told the servant, he said, we go up to worship. What was his worship? His worship was obedience to what God said. So praise starts first when a man submits himself to the lordship of the word of God. In other words, the things you want to do and the things you actually do are governed by only one principle. And that principle is the word of God. Did God say it? When God said it and you do it, you are giving him praise. Are you listening to me? Number two. Are you still here? Through what you say. Through what you say. Your speech, your mouth, the things you say. Which is where praise in singing and in talking and all of that come in. And I'm going to dwell on this for the next 10 minutes or so. When Abraham got to the mountain in Genesis chapter 22 verse 5, he said something to his servants. He said... We will go up and we will come back. Are you with me? He said, we will go up and we will come back. He's, what, why, why, why would he say that? God had told him, go up to the mountain and kill your son. Yet Abraham is telling his servants that we will go up to worship and we will come back down. The man had no... He, he was going to kill his son... Knowing fully well that when he killed that son, God will raise that son back to life. Whatever, there was no doubt in Abraham's mind that he was coming back down alone. No, he, there was, that was not the question. There was no question in his mind. Which is why the Bible tells us that in a figure, he was talking about Christ. In a figure. Which means the man was sure. He had such a, a confidence in God and in God's word that he submitted everything sensible and not sensible to what God said. And he said, I will go up to worship and we are coming back. Somebody say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Say like you mean it. Somebody say, where, where is all this taking us to? <laughs> Where, where is this guy taking us to? He, he, I, don't, I don't get it. You get it in a minute. Now, why am I dwelling on this? Praise is found in your mouth as well. I've talked about your life. In what you say. Hmm. What is, okay, Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. It qualifies the times that he will bless God. And he says all times. Which means praise to God is not dependent on just what God has done. That you know. Which means... In the good times, I'll bless the Lord. In the not too good times, I'll bless the Lord. When I feel happy, I'll bless the Lord. 
when I don't feel so happy, I'll bless the Lord. When everything looks like it's going right, I'll bless the Lord. When things look like they're not going right, I'll bless the Lord. When I have food on the table, I'll bless the Lord. When there is not so much food on the table, I'll bless the Lord. So the psalmist begins to introduce a praise dimension to humanity. And he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And then he qualifies it in case you don't understand. He says, his praise shall continually be found in my mouth. Which means anytime I open my mouth to speak, what will come out will give God glory. Are you listening to me? Anytime I talk, whatever I say will bring glory to God. What does it mean to praise? What is praise? He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Verse 2 says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So we need to know what it means by his praise. What does God's praise mean? When you are talking about the praise of God, one, you are talking about the person of God, the character and the nature of God. So when you read the Psalms that was written by the writer of this passage that we, are, well, that we just read, when you read that Psalm, he, be, he always talks about the the, the nature of God. He said, when I consider the heaven, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. He, he, he eulogizes God. He speaks about the greatness of God, the character of God. He says, once has God spoken. Twice have I heard the power belongs to God. That is praise. W what am I talking about? Praise one talks about God. So the focal point of great praise is not necessarily in what you have acquired. It's in a person. So when you begin to praise, your focus is on that person, on his nature on his character and on his power are you am i talking to someone so praise first and foremost is about god mm -hmm. god who he is that's number one number two what he has done so psalmist will say oh give thanks unto the lord for his good and his mercy endures forever to him that split the red sea for his good and his mercy endures forever to he that heals our diseases for his good and his mercy for endures forever he's praising god now not just because of who he is but number two because of what god has done what has God done in your life? There are some people here, it's okay. You can look at me like I'm entertaining you. I'm just talking like a show. This is not a show. You may be looking at me and thinking, why is he making so much noise? It's all right. I know where I am coming from. You may not have my kind of experience. Some people were born with a silver spoon. I was born with no spoon. Are you listening to me? Some people were born into royalty. My only claim to royalty is on Jesus. Are you listening to me? Some people were fed five times a day. I remember the times when I did not know whether I was going to eat or I was not going to eat. So excuse me if I'm not looking at your face when I'm talking about God. I don't need you to praise God. I'll have a party on the stage all by myself. Are you listening to me? Uh, uh, I'll have a party all by myself. Why? When I think about the goodness of God and what he has done for me, I cannot keep quiet. What he has done, what he has done, what he has done, I said what he has done, oh see what the Lord has done, even when we did not know him, when we were not born again, he was watching over us, they came to the next house and slaughtered them, they went to the one to your right and slaughtered them, but somehow you escaped that, oh God almighty, I feel like I'm preaching already, what he has done, he brought me from a village, I did not even know how to speak correct tenses. So don't get it twisted when I try to speak like an American or an Englishman or whatever it is that you hear in my life. I don't even know the accent I have, Seth. But it doesn't matter. You know, even on myself, I don't understand. But the point is, you just look at me. Tell you, I looked at my picture 15 years ago. And I said, is this a human being? I can't understand. But the problem with humanity is that we have short memory. We forget so soon. So the title of my message today is, Do Not Forget. Tell your neighbor, do not forget say like you mean it said do not forget so I read Psalm 103 verse 1 verse 1 it says bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits tell anybody don't forget 
now you are a VP. Now you are a director. Now you have a PhD before your name. And all of a sudden, when we're talking about praising God, you want to cross your leg. You want to fold your hand. You want to look cool. Come on, you are not all that. If it was not for the mercy of the Lord, we would have been consumed. Are you listening to me? Some of us understand that the degree will never have come. If not that the hand of God kept us from the things we knew and the things we did not know. Come on, give God a shout. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Human beings have this character. It's a very good, uh, it's a very good thing. I don't know what word to use to describe it. It's a very good, uh, whatever you want to call it, to have. It's a good disposition. It's a good quality. It's a good quality or characteristic. And you know what that character or that quality is? The ability to forget. But oftentimes, uh, we forget the things we should not forget and choose not to forget the things we should forget. So we hold on to the hurts. We hold on to the heartbreaks. We hold on to the pain. We hold on to... But the things that we should not forget, we forget. The devil is a liar. I will not forget his benefits. I will forget the pain, but I'll remember the gains that I have in Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So, I picked you when you were small in your own eyes. Now you are the CEO and you feel when it's time to praise God, you have to act cool. Yet when you go to the nightclub, you act like you're a lunatic. God, the devil is a liar. When it's time to dance in church, you saw that lady coming out here and dancing and dancing and some of you were looking like, what's wrong with her? You are the one that's got something wrong with you. She's got her praise on. You sit down there and act like you're all that. Act like you're all cool. Act like God didn't do anything for you and act like I'm talking crazy, but some of us will praise God. Even without music, we will dance. Are you listening to me? We don't need a choir to praise God. We'll praise God all by ourselves. <laughs> now you know how to dress. You can wear the nice shoe. You can put on the nice cologne. You drive a fancy car, and all of a sudden you feel you're all that. You know you're, you ain't all that. All the guys you are trying to show off to. Now, where were they then? The ones you are trying to post for now. Where were they then? When you were struggling and it was only you and God. When you were crying in the midnight and it was only you and God. When you were trusting God for that job. Trusting God for that baby. Trusting God for that house. They weren't there. It was you and God. Forget about them and give your God praise. <laughs> oh yeah Psalm 34 verse 1 flip it up and let me just tie this up there Psalm 34 verse 1 I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually, the word continually in the Hebrew means perpetually at every time, eternally there will not be a time that there will not be praise found in my mouth that's not just where I'm going. Go to the next verse and I'll close here. It says, my soul will make her boast in the Lord. <laughs> my soul will make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Ladies and gentlemen, hear what the Bible is saying here. Somebody is saying, I will boast in God. Now he's saying some people will hear and be glad. Not even him. So what is he saying that is making people glad? <laughs> now let us do a little bit of breaking scriptures down, which I like to do, but because of time I won't take you on my Hebrew and Greek journey. The word continually is diapantos, like I said, which means through eternity, through time. He, he, say, he, he removes the concept of time when he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continually diapantos means forever. No time to it. Um, be in my mouth now. Now, okay, calm down. Relax. What's pursuing yourself? <laughs> Ah, no, no, it's not my fault. I didn't make myself this way. 
I wish I could just start in one spot and be preacher. I can't. He's like fire. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say 10,000 10, words at the same time. Because when I think about God, if I, do you know what it means? When the day, when the psalmist said, if I had 10,000, 10,000. Is it, is it psalmist or is it a song? Okay, I want to be sure. The man said, this tongue, I, I tried to, but this tongue is not good enough. I wish I had more. <clears throat> and you come in the church, we say it's Thanksgiving service. You didn't come with your praise. Sit down there. Watch me. And by the way, I'm not praising him because I want him to do anything. No. If he doesn't do anything more than what he's done. If all he did was to save me and write my name in the Lamb's book of life, I'm good. Are you listening to me? Because it's not about man's money and man's acquisition. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of the things that he possesses. Are you listening to me? Rejoice not because you cast out demons, but rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You are sure that when you breathe your last, you are going home. Are you listening to me? That is something worth giving God praise for but the psalmist said the humble shall hear who is the humble anov in the Hebrew it's a, a combination of two words anov, anov and that is very interesting because it begins to explain something to us and then you understand what that verse really means he says I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul will begin to boast in God and the anov the humble when you hear humble you are thinking about some people that submit themselves to the will of God yes but that's not what he's talking about here the humble he's talking about here actually is the downtrodden. The word enough means people that are bent over by afflictions. People that are suffering. People that are depressed. People that have no hope. People that have lost the hope and there is no spring in their walk anymore. Are you listening to me? So Sammy said when I begin to make my boast in the Lord, those that are in depression will jump up. He said when I begin to make my boast in the Lord, those that are sad will begin to laugh. When I begin to make my boast in the Lord, the humble, the downtrodden will hear what I'm saying and they will have hope why because what i will be saying will make them rethink their circumstance <clears throat> i'm not saying it this is the bible he's saying that when i begin to praise my god what is praise praise is talking about God, who he is. Praise is talking about God, what he can do. And praise is talking about God, what he has done. When I begin to talk about my God, people that are afflicted will hear what I'm saying. And out of their hopelessness, they will have hope. Are you listening to me? So I'll begin to say, God is the one that brings the poor from the dung hill. That he may set him amongst the princes. And all of a sudden the poor hears that. And he says, I have hope. He can, if he can do it for somebody, then he'll do it for me. So when you begin to praise your God, it's not just about the song. It's about the eulogy that you give to God that makes you happy. That makes someone that is hearing what you are saying happy. Why? Because you are telling them about the goodness of God. You are telling them about the power of God. You are telling them that my God is able. He will deliver. He doesn't faint. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. Are you listening to me? Are you ready to praise your God? I didn't hear you. Oh, time up. Rise up. And let's go. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who is like me? I will bless the Lord. I will talk about God. I will make my boast in God. I will say, yes, throw your best arrows. God is with me. Like a mighty man of war, I will say to the Goliath, you have come against me with spears and with sword. But I come in the name of the Lord. I'm going to take you out. That is making your boasting God. Come on for 10 seconds. Open your mouth and begin to talk about your God. 